Today's video starts with a race. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1, let's do it. So, both of these clips are a 4K 10 minute clip, just talking head with some lumetri effects applied to it, very basic color grading. And the one here on your left doesn't have the technique that I'm gonna teach you today applied to it. And the one here on your right, well, it had it applied, that's why it's finished already. Yeah, I'm Manry, a Brazilian photographer and filmmaker lost in Italy and in this channel we talk all sorts of photo, video and tech related stuff. And today I'm going to teach you a technique called Smart Previews inside Adobe Premiere Pro that not only is going to help you to export 10 times faster as you could see, but also to avoid problems. Avoid those dreaded exports in which you just leave the computer trying to export a file only to come back and see that it failed right in the middle without exactly knowing why. This isn't any sort of mysterious trick or clickbait or anything like that. It is actually a workflow recommended by Adobe in their forums that is gonna help you to split the time that you dedicate to exporting only when your timeline is already finished properly, when your project is edited completely, but you're gonna split it during the editing of your timeline. Okay, but if it takes the same amount of time to render after or in the middle, what's the advantage of this? There are two big advantages. One of them is that if there's any kind of problem with any clip in the middle of your timeline, you're gonna discover this while you're still editing and then you can just fix it before wasting all that time to export to discover that it just failed. And the second reason is if you wanna fix something after you export a video, let's say you just wanna change a title or you wanna change one of the clips inside a 10 minute video and then you're gonna have to go through the whole time of exporting that video once again. Instead, using this technique, you can go back, just change whatever you wanted and since the rest of the video is already pre-rendered, Premiere is going to understand that for that part, he doesn't need to do anything. So it's just going to render again that small piece that you change it, and it's gonna take again just some seconds to export. Okay, so let's go inside Premiere. I'm gonna show you how to implement this workflow. So here we are, and all that I have is two different clips from the A7 III in 4K that you can see here, just basic talking head. So we're gonna cut into a 10 minute sequence. Come down here and choose new sequence. Let's just grab a template here like this one for example 1080 at 25 frames per second but we're gonna come to settings and we're gonna tweak it a little bit. So first thing we're gonna do is change this here to custom so that we can change everything in this page. The second thing to do is to change the frames per second of your timeline and here you can just pick whatever you'd like. In the sequence I'm gonna change here also this to 380 40 for to 160. This is all matching my footage. So you're gonna have to change it according to your footage or according to whatever kind of export you wanna have in the end. And here is the trick, video previews. So what do we got here? This is a list of all the kinds of files that you can have while rendering your project inside Premiere Pro. It's not about which kind of file is gonna come out after exporting. It's about the kind of preview files Premiere is gonna use in the back end when you're rendering it during your editing. Premiere is creating these kind of files here to make it much easier for the playback so that you can see whatever you're doing while you're still editing your footage. So here we have several different options, but the idea is we're gonna choose something that matches exactly the type of file that you're going to export. So you're, during your editing, you're gonna be creating these kind of files and then when exporting, and using the exact same kind of file, Premiere is going to understand that it already done this work before and won't have to do it again. So what I recommend you to use here is as the container, as the kind of file is choose QuickTime and the codec that we are gonna use is gonna be the Apple ProRes 422 proxy. But the idea is each one of these has a different quality standard. And in the description below, I'm gonna leave a rough idea of how many megabits per second each one is going to generate so that you can know more or less what you need according to what you're doing. And the idea is that Apple ProRes 42 proxy generates something around 45 megabits per second, which is good enough for YouTube or social media in general. If you need a bit higher quality, you can choose one of the other ones according to the list that I'm gonna be providing. Okay, so we have the timeline open here already. I'm just gonna grab these two clips into the timeline here which is an adjustment layer on top of all this. Okay, so right now, even if I change that configuration, talking about the previews, I didn't render this timeline yet. So if I try to export this file right now, it's gonna be just like any other kind of project without changing those parameters. So let's make a test. I'm just gonna go Ctrl M to see the export window. 
And here we're going to choose instead of H264, let's choose exactly what we chose before, which is QuickTime. And then down here, we're going to go to Apple ProRes 42 Proxy. By the way, if you're interested in a more in-depth video about Codex, I'm going to record one very, very soon. So if you can see a card above here or a link in the description, it's because I've done it already and you can already access it. Okay, so here I'm choosing the basic configuration that I want to use. So Apple ProRes 42 Proxy, it's going to create an MOV file. And then the trick comes down here. You can see that we can check this box called Use Previews, but we haven't generated them yet. So let's just queue this file up. It's going to open up on Media Encoder. And if we just hit play, you can see that it's just going through the timeline and it's going to be encoding everything from zero. So as you can see, it's going to take about eight minutes to export this video. And I have the log files open here, showing that the last export that I did was this one here, which took actually eight minutes, 32 seconds to do the whole timeline. Okay, so now it's time to work our magic inside Premiere. We're going to, inside the timeline, we're going to go to the beginning and we're going to mark I to mark the in point. And we're going to go to the end and just press O for the out point. And now that everything is selected, we're going to go to sequence, render, in to out. So now what Premiere is going to do is it's going to render all this timeline while we're still inside the editing part before we export it. And if there's any kind of issue with any of these clips, it's going to tell us right here. This is a very basic case in which we have only two different videos, two different clips inside the timeline, but in a normal editing workflow in which you would have several different files from different cameras with different effects applied, transitions, titles and everything, there are many things that can generate some sort of problem in that you would discover only in the exporting time. And here we're going to know beforehand if there's any kind of issue. And as you can see, it's going to take roughly the same time as the export, around eight minutes to do it. So doing it this way, we're only checking if there's any kind of issue before we export, but we're not winning any time if the first export is already our final export. But the idea is while you're editing, what you can go doing is every time that you stop a little bit, whatever you do that you're not touching the timeline in that moment, you can just go to sequence, render into out and let Premiere go generating the previews while you're doing it. So for every single second that you're not actually actively touching the timeline, or if you just switch windows and you go to answer an email or something like that, you can just make your own habit to just all the time go and put it to render in the background so that when you come back, you always have the timeline as fluid as possible and that when you go to export properly the file, it's going to be super fast to do it. All right, so once rendering and generating the previews is done, you can see now that the timeline is completely green and we can just scrub through it really, really easily with no problems at all. Because what Premiere is doing is instead of reading from the original file, which is an H.264 file that is quite hard to edit, it's actually reading from the preview that we generated in ProRes 42 Proxy. And now we can just try to export this file again. Let's go again to the export settings window. And here what we're going to do is just choose exactly the same codec, which is already chosen, Apple ProRes 42 Proxy. And we have used previews ticked just like we had before, but that wasn't doing anything because we didn't have the previews done. Let's queue this file up, go back to Media Encoder, and now let's just watch how it goes. And that's it. It's just gonna take exactly five, six seconds, a bit more. And it's done, it's over. Because it just uses everything that we had generated before already. Premiere is going to compare what you have right now in your timeline with the previous it generated, see if there's any kind of difference. If there isn't, it's just gonna copy everything, all the data, put it in one single file and export it for you. So as you can see it here, it took exactly 10 seconds for the encoding, which is much easier. Okay, so now let's go back inside Premiere and I'm gonna show you what happens when we change just a small part of the timeline using this technique. So first thing I'm gonna do is, here is the first file we have and here begins the second file. I'm just gonna grab a little piece of the second file, let's say just this part here, and I'm gonna drop it over the first one. And as you can see here on the timeline, it didn't change. It's not yellow or red, it's still green because we had already generated the preview files for this video here. So if I try to export this again, it's just gonna take the same 10 seconds, it won't change at all. One other change that we can do is that this video here, the second one, is being cropped. So if I extend it, now you can see that there is a yellow part up here. 
So I'll just change the out point to grab also that part. I'm going to drag the adjustment layer over it so we have also the Lumetri effects on top of it. And now let's try exporting this file all over again with the same settings. So Apple ProRes 42 proxy and they use previews ticked down here. So let's queue this file and run it. And now what Premiere is doing and what Media Encoder is doing is, is going through the whole timeline Everything is exactly the same, but in the end, and now we can see that we can even see the preview inside here, Media Encoder. So now it's rendering that part and we can check here in the log because of that small change. Now it took 30 seconds to export this file, which were just 23 seconds more of video that wasn't rendered before. So we actually had instead of 10 seconds, we had 30 seconds, but it's really nothing compared to what we would have to do if we had to re-export the whole project once again. And as I said before, you don't have to use ProRes 4.2.2 proxy. I use this as an example, but if you want to export in ProRes 4.2.2 or ProRes 4.4.4.4, whatever you want, you just have to generate the same kind of previews as the export file you're going to use. And a final tip goes for those people who don't want a ProRes file as the final export file. You want an H.264 or H.265 or whatever else you want. What you can do is you can still do it, the same procedure that I used here using ProRes because it's a much faster and much easier kind of file to edit and to have the previews and also to export these files. And then what you can do is just get the final export file, the MOV in ProRes or whatever you chose before and transcode it into the codec that you want. So let me show you how it's done. You just open Media Encoder, you can come to File, Add Source and then here you can choose whatever you want. So let's say, for example, we're going to get this last file we created, which is quite big. It's 10 minutes 4K, generated a 9.29 gigabyte file. And now that it's added here to the timeline, you can just click over the codec and it's going to open the export settings window once again. And here you can choose whatever you want. So let's say, for example, you want the H.264 file, which is a much more compact kind of file. It's going to generate an MP4 file we can choose down here what's going to be the bitrate that we want to use. So let's say, for example, a CBR 40. And then it's going to generate a 3 gigabytes file instead of the 9 gigabytes one. So we can just click OK. And now it's ready for transcoding and we can just click play and it's going to do it. And it doesn't take that much time, just like encoding from zero the timeline. In this instance, for example, it's going to take around three minutes to do it. And then you're going to have a final file in H.264 and it's going to be a much easier workflow for editing and for exporting without errors, without having to go back and everything. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and share with your friends that really need to know this tip right now and watch my other videos on the channel that you can see right here. See you. Ciao, ciao.